My name is Matthew Hall, and this is lab number five about a falling slinky. So the purpose of this lab is to graphically and mathematically model the relationship between the velocities of the top center of mass and the bottom of a falling slinky. So essentially, we'll, we'll see that there is a difference um, on the impact of the slinky uh, by external forces and internal forces. So th this shows the relationship between spring force and the force of gravity. To add on to it, it shows that at the bottom, the, the force of gravity equals the spring force. We'll see that it remains stationary. And some essential equations include the conservation of momentum and the velocity update formula. So to start this lab, um, I took a video from um, a falling slinky and put it in the tracker, and we got to see that there is some sort of relationship between the two. There's not um, not as much of a quantitative um, relationship, but more of like a, a seeing the slopes. And um, this can relate heavily to a terminal velocity model, as as I'll talk about in the conclusion. So here's here's three um, videos of this slinky. So the one on the left is tracking the top. The one in the middle is an approximate center of mass, and the um, one on the right is tracking the bottom. As you'll see, the the one on the left and then the middle, both of those graphs were relatively constant. So it, it, there was a pretty constant velocity going downward. And even though there, there should be slight acceleration, this was all due to user error, um, we see that there is uh, more or less some sort of constant velocity. And, and the question is, why is there constant velocity when we know that there's only one force? For that is because, in fact, there is an internal force on the slinky, such as the, the um, spring force, which opposes the force of gravity. So there's enough force going up still because it's a, it's a slinky with spring forces that the bottom just would remain stationary. And we see that in the um, in the graph furthest to the right. It, it almost catches up to its velocity a lot faster after being held um, at zero movement um, for about five seconds of the slinky falling. So here's, here's some of my coding. And essentially, I, I put together a bunch of pieces from three other labs. From lab one, it's mainly the velocity update and position update formula. Um, lab two was getting the idea of a drag force, but that would be replaced by spring force. And then lab four was to simulate spring force. And some energy is thrown in there just to demonstrate how gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy are uh, more or less um, used to conserve this energy. And, and so many of the pieces of information in the code are used through Google just using a, a standard slinky. It shows how uh, the slinky can not only be affected by the external forces, but it, it kind of yields a constant velocity because of the fact that there are internal forces. So in conclusion, uh, we ask ourselves why the bottom of the slinky is stationary, and that, that's the biggest thing to take away from this lab. Um, and like I said before, it is these, it's the internal forces that that show that the, the slinky can't, um, they ha it's um, falling more at a constant velocity and um, the bottom of the, the slinky, it, it doesn't have enough information to be affected by the force of gravity at, at that point. So this is close to the terminal velocity model because we see that in terminal velocity, drag force is not exactly constant throughout, the, throughout a fall. It increases over time. Uh, this is similar in a way because it, um, the the spring force that opposes the force of gravity for the bottom of the slinky, it, it's more or less affected by the distance um, of the slinky, the length of the slinky at any point. So as the length of the slinky, slinky increases uh, or decreases up to a point in which it is zero, then you start to see the, the bottom of the slinky move. It's, this is only a mere relationship between forces and not an actual model, because in no way is a falling slinky the same as a as a falling body where this where uh, the center of mass uh, um, isn't affected by an internal force. So what happens if this slinky is not ideal? You have to assume that a mass is distributed evenly throughout the coils of the slinky. But if you assume that the mass is not even and that there are variations within the, the slinky, um, then there's more that has to do with spring forces and, and um, there's a potential that um, your spring force may not be as great, and your center of mass may accelerate even more, or in fact, the bottom of the slinky will start moving. 
because of the fact that that um, gravity it wouldn't necessarily only be affecting a center of mass. It may the center of mass may end up being lower than the middle of this linky.